So today we're going to show you how to edit the pitch and timing of your vocals using the ARA version of Repitch from within Studio One version 6. Now as mentioned for this tutorial, I am using version 6, which is the very first version to support the custom menu integration. But if you're using an older version of Studio One, be sure to hang around to the very end of this tutorial and I'll show you how to add Repitch to earlier versions of Studio One. Now lastly, this video is to help get you started. For more in-depth tutorials, these can be found on our website. So let's get started. So before we do anything, let's have a quick listen to the track that we're working with. Just cause I don't want you first It doesn't mean I won't find another I don't wanna know your name Don't need your dreams, no You can keep your number Okay, so I'd say that on the whole, this is a fantastic vocal performance. But let's say, for sake of demonstration, that we want this to be tuned to 100% and we want to do this in the most natural and transparent way possible. So in order to get started, I'm going to select the vocal event, we're going to head to the audio menu, and we are going to choose Edit with Repitch. Now, this will automatically open up Repitch and it will automatically begin to ingest the vocal performance into the Repitch window. So before we start adjusting the tuning, let's talk about a couple different navigation tips. Holding down Option Command on a Mac or Alt Control on a PC gives us the ability to click, hold, and drag, and we can do a dynamic zooming that is both horizontal and vertical. Holding Shift Command on a Mac or Shift Control on a PC allows us to click, hold, and drag to reposition the contents of our screen. We have a navigation bar at the bottom, which can be used to slide from left to right. And in addition, we can adjust the handles to focus on the specific elements of exactly what we want to look at. We have a couple different ways that we can engage playback. So for example, anytime I click within the editor, you can see that this is synced to within the DAW timeline. In addition, double clicking anywhere in the editor will engage an isolated playback of the vocal performance. Just cause I don't want you, babe, it doesn't mean we can use the spacebar to stop, or we can also double click again to stop. Just cause I don't want you, babe, it doesn't mean. This is great for when you need to isolate a vocal and hone in on just a specific section. Now in addition, we can make a selection across multiple pitch blocks and clicking the Y key will automatically enable a playback range that is mirrored in the DAW. Making a highlighted range and clicking the Z key will horizontally zoom a specific area into view. And by clicking the forward slash key, we get an isolated playback of just the pitch blocks that you have selected. It doesn't mean I won't find enough. And of course, we can use a combination of all of these together. And last but not least, we have the ability to lock our screen. So if we don't want any scrolling to happen within Repitch, we can simply click the lock screen, and then this will allow us to play back without losing where we are in our editor. I won't find another. I don't want to know your name. Don't need your drinks. No. In addition, any time that you have a pitch block selected, this is something that will be enabled by default. All right, so let's get started. So we've got a couple different approaches that we can take in terms of how we want to work with our audio. So for example, if we click within this drop-down menu, notice that Synchro Arts have provided some presets for us. These are categorized. If we choose this vocal folder, we have a preset here to snap all to note centers 100%. This will essentially take the entire performance and aim to snap it to the nearest semitone. And this is of course based on a chromatic scale. But I'm going to be using a different workflow in this tutorial because I want to use some of these tools available over here to manually adjust our tuning. So I'm going to position my cursor from within the editor and choose Command A. Now I'm going to choose either the C key or pull up the Center Notes tool. Watch what happens now as I use this Center Notes tool. We have the ability to snap all of these pitch centers to 100%. Let's have a quick listen to see how this did. I'm going to double click from within the editor so we can hear this in isolation. Just cause I don't want you, babe, it doesn't mean I won't find another. I don't want to know your name, don't need your drinks, no. Okay, and a reminder as to where we began, we'll just zoom this in a little bit. Just cause I don't want you, babe, it doesn't mean I won't find another. Okay, so I'm happy with that at 100%, but I did notice one area that I want to make a slight change. I'm going to click the S key, which is a shortcut to move to the split tool. And I'm going to use the same modifiers, option and command on a Mac, which regardless of which tool I'm using will allow me to do my zooming commands. And let's just put a little split here. 
Now this is automatically repositioned this note to where I think is correct. I will click the S key another time to bring myself back to my main tool and let's double click here. While we're at it, I notice a little bit of a jagged line. I'm going to move over to the draw tool and let's just smooth out this transition. All right, so now that we've made this slight change, let's listen back to the performance. Just cause I don't want you, babe. It doesn't mean All right, so let's say that I'm happy with those changes. The next step is I want to actually render this into the actual file. I'm going to select the event and in Studio One, we're going to make sure that our inspector track is open. And now we have the ability to click this render tab. Now this is going to render the repitch tuning changes that we've made or timing changes if you've made them into the actual audio event. So now this has been rendered, but at any given point in time, if we need to go back to the performance, we also have the ability to restore. Well, let's go back to the rendered version. Now at this point, let's have a listen to our finished result. Just cause I don't want you, but it doesn't mean I won't find another. I don't wanna know your name. Don't need your dreams, no. You can keep your number. So that's using Repitch from within Studio One version 6. Now, if you're running an earlier version of Studio One, for example, Studio One 5, we can use the exact same workflow in terms of how we tune our vocals, how we use Repitch, and how we render those changes into the audio files. But there's just one slight difference in terms of how we are going to instantiate Repitch on these audio events. Let's take a look at a Studio One 5 session really quickly. So here we are in Studio One version five. And in this case, it's just as simple as opening up the browser. We're gonna to navigate to our effects. In my particular case, I have this sorted by vendor. So I'm gonna choose the Synchro Arts folder. We will open this. And now it's just a matter of holding down the Alt or Option key. I'm going to click, hold and drag Repitch VST onto the actual audio event. Now notice if I remove the Alt key, that it's just going to add this to the channel. But when I add the Alt key, it's going to add it as event effects. Now, one small little tweak that we need to do in order to make this workflow work exactly as it does in Studio One 6 is I'm going to make sure that this event is selected. Let's click this little drop down arrow and right over here underneath event effects, I'm going to hover my cursor over this little icon process volume after event effects, and I'm going to toggle this to the on position. What this means is that any volume changes in terms of event gain that we make in our actual events on the timeline will be reflected in playback. So that's how to add repitch to previous versions of Studio One and one important preference for any time you're using fades or event gain. Hope you enjoyed this and we'll catch you for more in the next video. Cheers.